In a lot of ways, HP Civilian series can be considered the OG series of HP laptops. It's almost as iconic as the brand itself and represents HP's mainstream offering, so it makes it truly special in that regard. The configuration we have here today is spec for 2024 standards, so it's got Intel's Core 5 processor, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 memory, Intel's integrated graphics, a medium-sized 512 gigabyte SSD, Wi-Fi 6E, and Bluetooth 5.3 standards, and a uniquely configured 16-inch OLED panel. Now, this laptop is truly special for a number of reasons. One of them is that it has a ton of configuration, so there's a good chance that the model this laptop you're looking at might have slightly different variations and configurations than the one I'm reviewing today. But nonetheless, I'll cover all the aspects and make this review as holistic as possible, so fret not, Let's get started. When you buy one of these things, you get some pretty standard cardboard packaging with some basic branding. Once you get to opening up the box, inside you have a few goodies, remove some protective packaging, and after that, here it is, the Pavilion 16 in the flesh. More on that in just a minute, but that sky blue color is amazing. Past that, we have a standard 65 watt charging adapter, though thankfully we do get Type-C charging right out of the box, yay! Past that, we have the standard wall out there charging cable piece, and finally some basic documentation for the laptop itself. The first thing you'll notice about this laptop is that it has exactly the same design language as previous generations, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I do like the overall curved edges here with that symmetrical linear reserved design. But what is unique truly is that sky blue color. It is so well executed. It might look a little lighter on camera, but it really is the perfect tone of blue for a laptop like this. You do have a semi-premium build with a top half metallic exterior. The laptop has a weight just shy of 4 pounds which isn't too shabby for a 16 inch device. Starting with the top side, like I mentioned, you do have a clean metallic lid over here. There's no unnecessary textures, it's smooth. And then of course you have that super reflective HP logo in the center. All the relevant IO ports are on either side of the device. So on one side, you've got a USB-A super speed port, a fully loaded HDMI 2.1 port. You've also got two Type-C ports, both of which have power delivery and DisplayPort 1.4 functionality. On the other side, one more USB-A super speed port, and of course, the good old headphone jack. Aside from a missing SD card reader, the IO port selection here is pretty respectable. The first thing you'll notice, of course, is that you have a removable plastic lid over here. However, you'll also appreciate the fact that you have a nice long air intake vent over here, providing plenty of cooling. Now you'll also notice that you have two speaker grills, one on either corner, indicating this is a bottom firing speaker setup. And yes, we will do a sound test later on. As soon as you unfold this laptop, you'll appreciate the generous amount of palm rest space you have here, which makes sense given this is a 16 inch form factor but what's really nice here is despite having a plastic inner chassis, that sky blue color really gives this laptop a far more premium appeal than it actually has. Now with that said, at the center you'll notice you have a nice large trackpad, lots of surf real estate. Unfortunately, it is a plastic surface finish, which means it is going to be prone to some degree of flex, but it's not too bad overall. And also you do have some degree of tactility as well, making this a relatively decent trackpad. Aesthetically speaking, this keyboard is really nice. I mean, just look at those color coordinated keycaps with the rest of the body. Look at the easy to read font and the nice amount of surface area per keycap. You also have the inclusion of a full size 10 keypad, a great layout overall. And yes, the keyboard is fully backlit with multiple brightness settings. However, the actual typing experience isn't all that great. The keycaps themselves are a little wobbly and finicky. So while you do have some degree of tactility when you type, it just feels loose and it's it's not a great experience, albeit not a bad one either. HP continues to have that weird fetish where they kind of make that pseudo speaker grill on the top. It's not actually a speaker grill and it's certainly not a passive cooling vent. It's just HP's weird design choice for whatever reason. Anyway, onto more important things. Right above that is you have the single tier hinge mechanism system. And I'm not a big fan of it. While it doesn't wobble a whole lot, these hinge systems are known to be particularly reliable. And if you do use your laptop in a rough fashion, there can be long-term wear and tear implications. As far as the display fitting is concerned, it's pretty standard. You do have a plastic encasing given this is a mid-range machine, though you do have a bit of a noticeable chin at the bottom. However, the side bezels are nice and narrow and immersive 
massive as well. Additionally, on the top, you have a relatively small forehead, at the center of which you have a surprisingly nice full HD webcam that does pretty decent in most light settings. Depending on where you are, again, the display configuration can greatly vary. For example, the more common model includes a standard full HD plus IPS panel. However, the one we have here actually has one of the more rare specifications. So this display has a 16 inch OLED panel and a really weird resolution of 2048 by 1280, which is almost 2K ish. And also it has a super fast refresh rate of 120 Hertz, which is nice. You additionally also do get 400 nits of peak SDR brightness and up to 600 nits with peak HDR content. Now past that, it's worth noting you do have a glossy finish because of the OLED panel and true blacks. As far as color rating is concerned, you have a 100% DCI-P3 rating, making colors look lively, vivid, and flush. Unfortunately, if you get the base model configuration with the lesser display, you're stuck with a 62% sRGB rating. A quick recap of the technical specifications on board. So we've got Intel's Core 5 120U processor. We also, of course, have 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 memory and Intel's integrated graphics. Depending on where you are in the world, again, you can spec this all the way up to a Intel Core Ultra 7 processor with up to 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X memory. As far as general performance is concerned, you have plenty of power here. Everything from surfing the web to word crunching is going to be a breeze. More demand activities like programming and code compilation, again, not an issue thanks to the ample amounts of system memory and decent horsepower from the processor. You can even get away with a little bit of 3D modeling, though without a discrete GPU, your performance will start dropping if things get too complex. Now, as far as video editing is concerned, the performance was disappointing. So we found that the Core 5 chip just struggles to keep up with multi-layer full HD video editing, which results in frequent frame drops in programs like DaVinci Resolve, for example. And if you do anything higher than full HD editing, well, you might as well forget it. This laptop can't handle it despite having sufficient system memory. In the world of gaming, similar situation. So we found games like Fortnite were barely hitting 30 plus frames per second with frequent frame drops in between. And again, the problem seems to be the Core 5 processor more than anything else. Though it is worth noting, technically, this display here does have a almost 2 k resolution, which might be a tad bit too much for the integrated graphics, so lowering your resolution does improve performance by a little bit. Thermals, on the other hand, are a very nice story. Even under unrealistic peak loads, this laptop barely hit a average surface temperature of 38 degrees Celsius, which is quite nice. You'll also find that more realistic sustain loads yield you around 35 degrees Celsius, which is a very respectable number. Fan noise isn't bad either. Even under peak loads, this machine barely hit the mid 40s, which is definitely saying something in a good way, given that this is a Intel based device. So good job there, HP. Self upgradability is extremely limited. Regardless of which model you get, RAM is entirely soldered on board, so you cannot upgrade or change that. Additionally, you do have one M.2 slot, which is preoccupied, but that can be upgraded up to a maximum of two terabytes of capacity. And you also have a M.2 slot for the connectivity module. So yes, you can technically upgrade your Wi-Fi on this thing. You've got a medium sized 58 watt hour battery, but it's not gonna do you any magic wonders because even with a realistic general productivity workload, you'll get just north of eight hours of runtime, which is far less than what Qualcomm offers with their Snapdragon chips, as well as what AMD is offering with their latest generation. Now, it's worth noting that you do have a bottom firing stereo speaker setup here. However, the speaker quality isn't all that great. It does get fairly loud and distortion is contained, but there's not a lot of depth. I suppose as expected of a mid-range machine though. Here's a quick sound test for reference. Grew up too fast without warning. And when it rains, it's pouring. I got dreams, big dreams. I wanna do big things. But I just can't seem to put it all together. I just wanna be seen. I'm jumping ship, I'm a diving. Middle of the ocean, swimming till I find it. I see it now. The HP Pavilion 16 tries its utmost best to be everything you'd want from a mid-range machine. And for a lot of the part, it succeeds. It's got a decent build quality. That sky blue color is a really interesting and truly unique choice that brings a breath of fresh air. Though you can get the silver color as well if you want. You've got decent IO port selection, a moderately nice keyboard as well as trackpad. And the top tier display here is really nice for what this machine is. 
However, the performance here can vary a lot because of the configurational mess that HP's created. So you can get this laptop with something as little as a Core 5 that we have here, or with something as strong as a Core 7 Ultra processor. And the problem is that, for example, the configuration I have has a base processor, but the highest end OLED panel. But in the States, for example, the OLED panel doesn't even appear to be on sale yet, which is just confusing. And HP's kind of distributed the parts in a bit of a messy situation where this laptop really doesn't feel streamlined at all and the HP Pavilion I'm getting could be completely different than the one you're getting. Despite all this, I think the Pavilion 16 definitely does hit a lot of the right spots you'd want for general productivity and all the configurations will, at a bare minimum, give you great general performance. For more heavy duty activities though, do your research as you might find some of the competitors have a little bit more horsepower to them at similar price properties. Nonetheless, let me know what you think of this machine. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that like button and sub to our channel. It genuinely means the world to me and helps me grow and I'll catch you in the next one.